Today we're going to talk about how to replace a PCB on a busted hard drive. So this is a hard drive that I got out of a Lacey uh, external hard drive and uh, it starts to make, it starts to smell like smoke um, because it was plugged in, the power adapter was plugged in 45 degrees off angle. Uh, so I spent hours online researching how to find a replacement PCB. I read an article on Lifehacker uh, about how you can replace a PCB and hopefully maybe it'll work. I spent hours trying to find it. I even I even ordered a replacement hard drive, same model, uh, but it turned out that I didn't have the right key things. And uh, I stumbled upon a, a website called uh, OnePCBSolution.com uh, and they had this amazing guide where you can just step through and select your particular model of your hard drive and then select the particular chip on the back and then the other thing. And with each step, it asks you the most important question first. So instead of this list of like four or five things I have to match, it told me exactly what mattered and what didn't. And it, it, it took me like a few minutes to get through the guide, just flipping the hard drive around to get the information I needed. And it was uh, amazingly quick. And they happened to carry the PCB I needed now. And I got it in about a week. Um, luckily, they're actually located in Canada, as am I. So it worked out really, really well. And one nice touch I really, really liked is uh, there's handy instructions and uh, they were actually really, really responsive to email because I asked them, am I going to have to, I just sent them a quick email about whether I'm going to have to like replace a firmware chip. They were like, no, nah, no, you don't have to do that. We've got instructions. And one little thing I really liked is that they've actually got put in a little torque screw in here, a screwdriver in here as well, which I was like, uh, where the hell am I going to find one of these things? So I really liked that they, they threw that in there as well. Take each of these screws off and uh, then put in the other one and see uh, if the whole damn thing works and if you are lucky enough to have that happen. So let's just get to it. Uh, make sure you discharge yourself uh, of static electricity. So I just touched the radiator that was behind me. It wasn't hot, luckily. Just unscrewing some, so it's not exactly important that you see it. Came right off. It's a good idea not to tighten all of the screws at once when you're doing a lot of screws like this. Uh, get everything a little bit tight and then go back and forth to tighten them down. Just sort of rocking back and forth. And of course be careful not to touch the PCB if you can avoid it even if you don't have been static, uh, even if you have discharged all of your static electricity. Okay, so we've got the new board on. So we're going to try to uh, connect this hard drive now into this uh, Voyager Q USB 3 um, enclosure thing. Really useful for me because uh, I have a lot of hard drives and getting hard drive, uh, getting external cases for each one can get quite expensive. So it's just, it was just cheaper for me to buy one of these things and just keep the hard drives in their own like bags and cases and stuff. So fingers crossed. Ah, okay, it recognized it. 
So this was a, a success. The hard drive is being read by the computer, which is going ahead and copying everything off of it. And I took their advice and I'm gonna just back up everything off of it right now and basically consider the hard drive broken. I may, I may throw it in an external hard drive case and just use it for a little bit, but I'm basically considering it broken and essentially it's for data that I really don't care if it gets screwed up or not. Um, another thing I'm gonna have to do is figure out what happened to the 130 gig. Uh, I think there was a, an NTFS partition on this drive as well. Uh, that seems to have gone missing, but that's just, you know, data recovery tools and that's going to be fairly easy. But, you know, between OnePCBSolution.com being able to get me so easily figure out which PCB I needed and then sending it to me so quickly, I'm really glad to be able to get the data off because we were looking at paying like $800 or something. We got a quote from a data recovery place and that's way too much. I mean, the data is worth a lot to me, but not that much. So being able to spend instead 40 bucks, get a replacement PCB, install it myself in just minutes and get the whole thing up and running very happy with this solution